Ah. And in some sports news, uh, Team USA, well, not Team USA, but it was voted upon that LeBron would be the flag bearer for all of Team USA in the upcoming Olympics. It is the first time in history that a men's basketball player is going to be the flag bearer. So this was big news over the course of the last 24 hours. Uh, people are talking about it. What an honor uh, and, uh, you know, momentous portion of LeBron's career this is. The fact that he is going to bear the Team USA flag at the Olympics. A lot of people are waxing poetically about LeBron as a result, which, of course, is typical. Uh, but this says uh, LeBron James to bear Team USA flag at Paris Olympics ceremony. LeBron James has been voted by his fellow Olympians to be the Team USA flag bearer at the opening ceremony on the river scene on Friday in Paris. I apologize if I said that wrong. I probably did. James is the first men's basketball player to carry the flag for Team USA. Women's basketball players Sue Bird and Dawn Staley previously served in the honorary role. Paris is James' fourth Olympics. He won goals in 2008 in Beijing and 2012 in London and a bronze in 2004 in Athens. It's an incredible honor to represent the United States on this global stage, especially in a moment that can bring the whole world together, James said in a statement from London, where Team USA will play its final pre-Olympic exhibition game Monday, which was yesterday, against Germany. For a kid from Akron, this responsibility means everything to not only myself, but to my family, all the kids in my hometown, my teammates, fellow Olympians, and so many people across the country with big aspirations. Sports have the power to bring us all together, and I'm proud to be a part of this important moment. James was nominated for the honor by Stephen Curry, who filmed a video supporting the nomination and USA Basketball. We are thrilled to announce LeBron James as one of two flag bearers who will lead Team USA in the opening ceremony and officially open the Paris 2024 Games. Uh, U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee CEO Sarah Hirschland said in a statement, being selected by your teammates to carry the flag is a tremendous honor and a testament to LeBron's passion for Team USA and his dedication to his sport. We will watch with great pride as the flag bearers lead our athletes who are about to embark on a remarkable journey together. Team USA's woman flag bearer will be announced on Tuesday. So there you go. Uh, LeBron is going to be the flag bearer for Team USA. Uh, what do you make of this situation? And what do you make of the surrounding commentary around LeBron being the flag bearer for Team USA? <clears throat> well, I mean, I think it's it's – it's about right, honestly. I think it's about due time that he did something like this. So um, I don't see anything wrong with it uh, as far in the sense of him being selected or the, the the you know, the adoration, I guess, that people or admiration or whatever they want to give it uh, towards uh, him getting there. So I don't see any problem with it for that for that part. And I feel like it fits his um, his life legacy and his narrative very well. And, you know, what would have it been like for him not to be a flag bearer at any point in his career? So because and let's be honest, uh, he is the most popular athlete right now, active athlete. So everybody knows who LeBron James is. So um, I think as far as that goes, as far as him being like, who is the athlete of America? You know, it's, it's, well, it's LeBron James. So. Um, I see that I see that being a good representation from from that angle. Uh, he he has been a good ambassador for the game, uh, at least as far as PR and being out there and doing all that stuff. You know, being a presidential candidate, you know, running the campaign to be the goat, <laughs> and um, so a part of his campaign of doing that is um all the good ways that he's been carrying himself throughout uh, his career, you know, at least perceivably. And he's done that quite well. So uh, I don't see why he wouldn't be uh, given this honor. I'm, I'm actually quite surprised. This is the first time he's been at least asked to do it. So, um, but yeah, I think this is appropriate. I think it's right in line uh, with his body of work. Uh, but, you know, I, I want, I want gold. Uh so, you know, hopefully, you know, he can bring home the gold 
But uh, what are your thoughts on Lafag Bearer uh, getting the opportunity to bear the flag for America? Uh, I think it's I think it's cool that he is the flag bearer. And like you, I agree. Who else is it going to like if there is going to be a men's basketball player to do it? It would make completely zero sense for it to be anyone other than him. He is the president of the United States in a bas- <laughs> from a from a, bas- from, a from a international basketball Correct. and really sports in general standpoint. He is the dignitary who is most uh, who is most um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's most befitting of him to do this like it's the most it makes the most sense Mm -hmm. um he's the most qualified i would say um so i'm not necessarily going to hate on him being the flag bearer in and of itself because it makes the most sense for him to do it so i think that's kind of cool Uh, but here's here's what i will say because there is going to be a but Uh. (laughs) (laughs) um you know, this is going to be you. Remember, you know, one of the things that I talk about with Le- with this LeBron stuff mm-hmm. is there is an effort to create categories in order to fill in more. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so here's, <laughs> here's Here's the only thing with this, okay? (laughs) Here's the only thing with this. All right. (laughs) All right, no, he's going (laughs) ahead. When it comes to LeBron, the very pro LeBron media and his talent agency and his agents in the media who speak up on his behalf have for 20 years now been making a very concerted effort to forcefully imply that it is universally agreed upon that he is the greatest player of all time. Yeah. However, because of his because of the holes in his playing career, juxtaposed to other people like Jordan and Kobe, you have to invent new categories in order to be able to more sternly suggest that that is what he is, the greatest player ever. So what happens? Well, we start to invent new categories. He's played the longest amount of years. He's playing with his son. He's the league's all-time leading scorer. So you start to invent these new categories in order to, you know, suggest on his behalf that he's the greatest player ever. Because the traditional tent poles for this requirement, he somewhat falls short. Losing in the finals five times and, you know, going 66 and 16, losing in the second round, getting swept, uh, being the prohibited favorite and still losing. Um, You know, this is just perception based on what fans say right um being propelled to win the finals because of referees and a suspension um and injuries although injuries i'm I'm not willing i won't include injuries because injuries are a part of the game but you know key players being suspended for closeout games that's a little suspect um winning in the bubble when you eliminate variables like travel and home court advantage it's a little suspect So all of these things factor into one's very viable stance that he's not the greatest player ever. But, of course, LeBron fans can't stand the idea that he is not the greatest player ever. So in order to reinforce the idea that he is, we have to invent new categories. I've been saying this for years, and I don't think I'm wrong with saying this, uh, despite what the LeBron fanboys say. So... What is going to be another bullet in the LeBron holster, in the LeBron greatest of all time holster? He was the flag bearer at the Olympics as the first men's basketball player. (laughs) (laughs) That's going to be a talking point that people like Nick Wright and Shannon Sharp bring up. Five, ten years from now, when we do another one of these ridiculously exasperating arguments over who is the greatest player ever, people like them are going to talk about how he was the first ever men's basketball player to be the flag bearer at the Olympics for Team USA. And that's going to be used as a legitimate claim as to why he's one of the greatest players ever. Now, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Up until this point in history, gold medals have never really been one of the prerequisites for evaluating gold status. It's a nice little thing that people kind of throw in there to sort of wax poetically about a player's career, but it's never really been a part of the equation. Mm -hmm. It's a cool little thing, but is it really a part of the equation? Not really. 
Kobe has two gold medals. No one brings up that when they're talking about Kobe. Jordan has the one in eight. Jordan has two, 88 and 92. No one really talks about that. They just talk about the championships and the career achievements and the MVPs and the final MVPs, so on and so forth. But with LeBron, we're inventing these new these new requirements, these new categories. We're inventing new qualifiers on the fly. So that's the only thing that I'm saying is that I fully anticipate Kendrick Perkins, Nick Wright, Shannon Sharp, um, uh, 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 Marcus Spears, all of these LeBron people in the media, um, uh, Jason McIntyre, he's the guy who's on Cal Herd's show. These people who just get so annoyed, like I can tolerate them otherwise. But when it comes to LeBron, they're just so annoying because they're going to peddle this stuff and they're going to expect people to believe it. And so I'm not really. I, and so it's it's crazy. I don't want to poo poo this because mm -hmm. I do think in and of itself, in a vacuum, is a tremendous achievement. Yeah. But when you start throwing it in my face as this is another reason as to why he's the greatest ever, that's when I'm like, OK, I can't deal with I can't have this conversation anymore. Agreed. And that's what's going to happen. And it's a shame because. I don't really dislike LeBron. I hate the LeBron media. Yeah. It's the LeBron narrative that I hate, not him. Correct. Now, I do think that he feeds into it. He Correct. feeds into it because he knows this. He's not an idiot. <laughs> he knows this stuff. He knows right. it. But he wasn't the one who created it. The machine created it. And that's what I hate. I rail against the machine. And that's what's going to happen. We're going to start hearing that. You know, when people talk about Jordan and his six for six, they're going to talk about LeBron's longevity, playing with his son, and now he's carrying the flag. Amongst the other things that he did to sort of stuff the ballot box on his behalf. Uh, so I just want people to be prepared because truth tellers need to remain firm in, in the understanding that these qualifiers do not need to be amended and made qualifiers just for the sake of bringing LeBron into the conversation for that stuff. Yeah, man. I, you know, they're doing a great job with this campaign, by the way. Um, you know, the younger people are buying it for the most part. So, and they're going to be future people later and they're going to carry the torch. Uh, but I know that there's some real truth seekers out there uh, that really can see that this is all a facade. Now you had actually, you had actually cracked the code on this whole LeBron thing with the in the previous topics. Where you one of the previous topics where you're talking about um, Magic Johnson and um, Larry Bird bringing the attention, and then Jordan really being the one to make it international. And what the NBA saw from Jordan, his superstar ability, was that he could be the face of the NBA. <laughs> and then with that, they pushed they pushed the NBA globally and it took off with this cash cow called Jordan. Now, mind you guys, I'm a, I, you know, I, you know, I have my reservations about Jordan too. I was there. So I saw the guy was a phenomenal, phenomenal athlete and, you know, a competitive person winning all that good stuff. But I also saw the favor that he got from fouls, series swinging things that happened here and there. So I saw that too. And the reason being was, well, he's a cash cow. He's got to win. And so uh, same thing they do with LeBron. <laughs> At least they try. <laughs> they didn't try to get this boy game. <laughs> He's still blowing. All right. But look at the free throw discrepancies over the last three seasons of the Lakers. They still can't win shooting over, over a thousand more, you know, free throws than their competitors, you know, over the last three seasons. Uh, it's ridiculous. So, you know, they try with, with him and they still do their thing, you know, for him to make things available for him because he's their cash cow. This is why the NBA is always talking about or ESPN is always talking about who's going to be the next face of the league. And as we all know, because we had talked about this before, why do the face of the league have to be a domestic person? You know, we clearly have Joker out here going crazy. Uh, Luca is international phenomenon. Everybody likes Luca, right? Well, why can't he be the face of the NBA? Why does it have to be Anthony Edwards? You know? Oh, was, why Anthony Edwards? Because he's the young, upcoming domestic guy. They were trying to do it with Ja, but Ja want to shoot up clubs, allegedly. Jason, yeah, and then Jason Tatum, they targeted him. <laughs> yeah. It flips so, from it, it went from Ja to Tatum, and now it's yeah. going to Anthony yeah, because yeah, because Tatum because Tatum wasn't really carrying the torch like that for reasons being well, he didn't even win MVP on his own team, so that that's the reason why. 
right? Because it wasn't there. So he's not going to be the face of the league. So who's going to be the guy? So they're looking for this domestic person. The reason being is you see what's going on right now with international play. And you see people like the Joker over there doing his thing for Serbia. If he's the face of the league, then Serbia is the face of the league. And we can't have that. We need the face of the league to be Captain America LeBron. <laughs> Flying through the air at age 40 years old, defying the laws of physics and father time himself. That's what we need for America. Bear the flag, LeBron. <laughs> and he's going to bear that flag. Who's going to be the next person to carry that torch? So the next person that we're going to start a legacy for, you know, and start a narrative for them. Nobody's taking up the torch, dude. So it's kind of like, in a way, LeBron's like Joe Biden. He's representing an old guard of politicians that they're still pushing through because nobody's really buying the new people. <laughs> and so he's getting away with this and that's fine. Uh, but, you know, but like you said, in a vacuum, you know, just for him as a person, you know, hey, man, that is cool. You know, so take that, you know, but, you know, but I think the league has its agendas. That was the point of that whole little thing I was saying there. And I think that LeBron fit the mold of the agenda. That's why we keep getting these GOAT uh, topics. And the next yeah. person that's going to be the face is going to be compared to LeBron and Jordan. And that's why they already started the Anthony Edwards Jordan thing already. Yeah. You know, and it's premature if you ask me. He's got all the, the right tools, but let's let the guy grow first. But they're not wasting any time. They need the replacement for LeBron right now. And so uh, that's what all this stuff is about. So LeBron is that guy that's still doing it, literally still carrying the torch. And that's why they love him, invest in him so much, let him get away with so much little collusion. And everybody has to deal with it. And that's why us as fans, the purists, who are sitting here watching this stuff, you know, seem like we're hating. It's not that we're hating. Like you said, it's the media. Last thing I'll say is that um, I realized that the media can make me hate a person since from Tim Tebow. Tom I Brady was another one. Yeah, and Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. But yeah. Tim Tebow was first for me. Yeah, yeah. And when, um, I don't have a reason to like Tim Tebow because he went to Florida. So it's already, but, you know, him being a, a God man and all that stuff. I was like, hey, man, whatever. Rock out, bro. I don't have a problem with that. But them playing up into that so much. I mean, they basically made him football Jesus for, for, for three years or whatever it was. It, you know, him winning the national championship. It was all in your face every day. Tim Tebow, Tebow, Tebow. And then I grew a disdain for this man. But then when he got into the NFL and then they started hating on him, saying he can't throw. Well, he couldn't throw in college. <laughs> but he was, he was winning in college. So let the man try to win in the NFL with this ugly stuff. See what happened. You know, and um, but no, they were just railing on the guy, railing on it. Then it got to the point where I was like, hey, wait a second. So it wasn't the fact that I didn't like Tim Tebow, the person. The media, with all of their hype and all of their garbage, made me look at him different. Yeah. And so that's what this whole media is. So, and like you said, LeBron does play into it. So it doesn't help at times. And then we will call him a narcissist you know, right. he, he, because he buys into it and he actually believes it at times. So that's the reason with all of this stuff. But yeah, man, I agree. I think this is all media stuff uh, when it comes to this thing. And I think you have a point when it comes to the NBA, uh, you know, propelling, you know, things globally. <clears throat> and that's why I think that him being who he is, is the best brand ambassador for the league. So yeah. they're going to do whatever it takes to make him shine. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the, the the LeBron media machine is in full effect, man. Um, now you know I just it's I'm on a countdown. Whenever there's some sort of thing that takes place, it's only a matter of time before it is used as a as a narrative talking point on these various shows to even more bolster his quote unquote legacy, which is another very very overused word, uh, legacy. But all these things are is just new chits in his armor. <laughs> Uh, it, it literally is like these are just going to be brought up as brand new talking points mm -hmm. to fortify the idea that he's the greatest ever, because long after he has retired, the NBA and the media collectively are still going to be able to benefit even monetarily from the continued ongoing discussion of whether he's the greatest player ever. So right. the more things that you can use to talk about that, the longer you can spend segments and shows and everything else talking about it and getting people riled up and, 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 and arguing over it. 
and you know it is what it is but in my book he'll, he'll just never be that because it's about career achievement and it's about basketball i don't care about all of this other stuff i'll never concede that and even if it became more of a matter of fact out of stubbornness i wouldn't concede it just because of <laughs> Just because of my disdain for what the media has done with this conversation. It's just very annoying. Facts. <laughs> One thousand. <laughs> yeah. Uh. 